Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Today on the podcast, we have the pleasure of being joined by Hina Dixit, who is a partner at M12, which is Microsoft's venture fund based in San Francisco, where she focuses on investments in AI, infrastructure, and gaming. With over 13 years experience in software engineering, she has a deep understanding of industry and is an expert in AI, infrastructure, dev tools, and cloud. Hina previously led AI investments at SAMHSA Next and invested in over 10 companies, including Mosaic ML, which was acquired by Databricks, Stability AI, Dynamo Flow, and Space and Time, among others. We're super excited to have you on the show today. Welcome, Hina. Thank you so much for having me, Jaden. This is a pleasure. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, super happy to have you on the show today. What I would love to kind of get this kicked off with is asking you a little bit about your journey. What led you to become a partner M12? What led you to kind of focus on AI and and kind of the infrastructure investment side of things? Give us a little bit about your background. Absolutely. So I started like my journey, just like most of the Indians who make it to US, started uh, here like, you know, uh, with my master's degree from Santa Clara University, um, you know, did major in computer networks at that time. Cisco was a big, big thing. It's even a big thing now. Um, and wanted to like, you know, focus on, you know, game changing problems and uh, the global problems that we were seeing at that time. That was the motto, like, how can I go and make that tent in the universe? How can I go and, you know, change the world in some way? And um, I don't know, like, if I'm doing it now, like, I, I'm just trying to contribute to other people's journey in some way. But that's how I started uh, this journey. And uh, after that, like, you know, I was at Semantic um, and I started as a software engineer. And then I moved to Apple and started leading some of their projects, uh, which included iCloud. Um, that, that includes Restore from Backup, uh, Sync Utility, um, you know, across your devices, I focused heavily on security aspects like keychain. I was here right for that one when we shipped it to factor authentication. Um, that 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 was interesting. And then I moved more towards AI as I grew and started focusing uh, on data structure at a very, very initial state. And then moved on to more of like these very technologies like OCR, facial recognition, like facial expression recognition, started like working with different DIT members and like, you know, then started leading bigger team <laughs> for the time. Also worked with Xcode uh, quite a lot. And I know like um, you had Chris Latner earlier, we were in the, you know, same org <laughs> essentially. Yeah. yeah. So uh, from Apple, like I started doing more of leadership efforts there. And I... This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely realized I had this knack of, you know, solving different problems and not just solving them, understanding the real consumer pain points and being able to deliver those solutions with perfection. And thinking about those problems from each and every edge use case and from every facet. So it comes very natural to me because I am, I started my journey as a software developer. And, uh, you know, that, that you can think of like, in a way, was a boon. <laughs> With being at Apple, you tend to learn um, about details and how you perfect those details. And I think I imbibed that completely for uh, around eight years when I was there. And then um, I moved to Samsung Next. Um, so they wanted me to do their AI thesis back in like 2021, October, like I started viewing them. 
and um, I, I came up with the thesis and joined Samsung Next that time and we started with AI investment. I started like leading all the efforts there. So after that, like, you know, uh, Microsoft happened and I'm so excited to be here and still continuing on this journey to make a change in everyone's life, like in some way, hopefully. What? That's amazing. What a fascinating background. You've, you've done so many amazing things at some really incredible companies, which I'm sure have all contributed to your experience and, and kind of where you're at today. Something I'd, I'd love to ask you about, um, you're at Microsoft now, um, at M12, um, looking at projects. What are some common mistakes that startups make when they're looking for investments um, and when they're kind of seeking investment in AI projects? Yeah, so I've been seeing a lot of like, you know, uh, people trying to raise at a very hefty valuation at a very early stage. And I think like that can be a big mistake in the future because what if you do not prove your worth and eventually you're not able to find the right business, then what happens in future is that you end up, you know, doing a down round. And not that it means that it's end of the world, but I feel like my philosophy and my guidance to like, you know, different founders is that, hey, like, you know, set lower expectation and then deliver way beyond that. And um, I think in that way, you just surprise the people because, you know, you're not bounded by any number. Like, you know, you still, you can experiment a lot. You can take more greater risk because, hey, like, you know, you're just getting started. You don't have a bigger valuation number on you. You did not raise like too much, like, you know, for everybody to have their eyes on you. You only raised the amount which was crucial to you to like, you know, ship for the next iteration. Like, you know, say you're good for next two, three years and that's good enough. It covers your compute, covers your, you know, uh, uh, pay salaries and, uh, you know, everything else and ha gives you a little bit extra runway and some safe landing as well, like, right, if needed, gives you six to eight months extra before you start to, like, you know, raise again, right? So if, if you're good with that amount, just go for it. Do not look for a higher valuation. And the other thing, like, people do, they do not think about the equity dilution initially, right? Like, so that number can vary. Like if you want a very high valuation, you might, or you're raising like a really bigger round, which you really do not need right away. You might end up like trading more of your equity at a very early stage, which I would say is not the wisest thing, you know. Uh, the other thing like I feel is a lot of founders, um, they do not start exploring opportunities of collaboration early ahead. I feel like as you learn and work with others at different facets, like at different stages of your you know, product development, you get to know, know more about the industry and specific pain points that your customers are needing. You will discover the kind of businesses your product can like, you know, approach and solve, like, you know, and be part of just by talking to a lot of like, you know, your early users at that point. So I feel like that is that is a great thing. And having that flexibility to constantly evolve yourself, um, I feel that is essential too in, in some way, if you think of. Because um, at times you'll need to pivot. At times, like, you know, you'll figure out, okay, like you, you thought your vision was something, but then you need to tweak a little bit in order to meet the business requirements of your consumers. And then you tweak. So having that kind of flexibility, apart from like that solid will and vision that that's needed too. Yeah, I love that. I think that is uh, so, so important. That's amazing advice. Something else I'd like to ask you about specifically is, you know, how do you evaluate the potential of an AI startup before you decide to invest or move forward with one? So I will give my personal holistic approach. This is not related to M12. Um, this is not related to Samsung Next. It's just like how I personally think about investment, right? Like because I angel invest as well. So First thing that is very important is for anybody to find the right co-founder or at least find the right team for them to build their dream startup with. If there is a like a good team together, no matter like what kind of future times that you see, you'll stick together, you'll still be able to ship and you'll still be able to meet the challenges like which are, you know, not foreseen as of now, right? So I feel finding the right team members at an early point, even before like, you know, you try to conceptualize your startup, like at a very early and beginning stage, I think that is very important. 
and then being passionate about the idea that you're working on like that consumer pain point and relating to that in some way that is another thing that matters a lot right like i can pick maybe like you know the most amazing business use case out there but then maybe i'm not the right person to you know solve it because i i don't know what my customers want i don't have enough like um you know talent or i do not have enough technical information to solve that kind of problem then you know i'm not the right fit for that solution and i'm not going to have any defensibility when i go for like you know uh, you know selling my product out so i feel like it's really important to pick your passion and follow that and pursue that um then another thing which i really see when um i'm looking at ai startup is like what is the ultimate defensibility here like is there like some way that uh, in this particular business might uh you know not do well in the future uh, would it become deprecated uh, by like advances which are made by like you know some other startups around do these guys like have a holistic vision of the problem that they are trying to solve and how long of a distance are they thinking of going right like do they want like you know to just solve one quick small product or if there is a grander like you know vision and scheme of things around right so i think that that's very important too and of course like you know it it really matters how big the market is if you're going with a very you know experimental product in a very small market you're not going to like you know win enough customers for you to sustain that business or you know you sh- if it's a smaller market then you know your needs and requirements and like you know the unit economics should work uh, in your favor that okay you're still making enough money you're still able to like you know your sole player maybe like you are they are not of like a lot of you know startups there it's not a crowded space then you can still have that leverage of like you know conquering that small space if you're passionate about that so i feel like these things are definitely important and then not to mention like i feel uh it's it's very important for the founders to kind of like pitch their startup very well <laughs> right and um, the pitching like some of us are not like good with presentation and it's not about that it's just about delivering your ideas succinctly like you know to the vcs and being able to communicate those ideas and it could be like in written format it could be like you know while you're trying to do some whiteboarding together so i'm 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 more open to those kind of like discussions too um and i know like a lot of different vcs tend to take more traditional approach but uh, i feel like i want to understand uh, how like you know you know these founders are thinking about solving this problem as well like it matters to me like how how they are thinking about it as well in some way yeah i think that's uh so so important so i think that's some great insights there you've obviously been in, involved with software engineering for a number of years um i would love to ask you you know how have you seen the ai landscape change during your time that you've been in the tech space Oh my god it has changed completely <laughs> I remember like having these smaller projects like vision kit and like facial recognition and handwriting recognition those used to be very simple like you know just text reading from any pictures that you take like simple OCR and then writing I remember writing those kind of frameworks um and now like if you look at the kind of like llms that we work on like the models that we have the number of parameters we have like and the kind of experimentation is going on in the research field and how everybody is trying to push the edge to the next level like it's amazing like i'm so energized by all the great work that's coming up by like you know my different like you know ex colleagues my friends it's so exciting to be in this time frame honestly um people are like more ready to take greater risk in general and uh, people are like willing to invest in ai like at that time like you know uh, initially like you know there wasn't like a bigger team like even even within apple uh, there were teams but after we got john g andrea he he's he's great he's 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 an awesome person and and apple was very lucky to like you know get them so had i i think like things just changed like even in any of these companies like right like apple 
definitely is doing great in AI now. And um, Microsoft, like, you know, AI is at next level. And everything in AI has been so exciting. And because we, I always used to dream, like in early times, I used to think, oh, AI is a great field. Like, you know, I want to study more and I want to learn more about it. But then I didn't know, like, you know, um, if it's easy to land those kind of jobs. And now there are so many great opportunities. And not just that, if you want to become a founder today, even if the market situation is like like this, people are ready to like leave their desk jobs and take these bigger risks, which is, which is amazing. Like, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading like more of New Rip's papers, honestly. I um, was just looking at a few like uh, two days ago. Really great work. Yeah, there's so much, there's so many exciting things happening, so many advancements. And uh, like I, like you mentioned, I think it is definitely a trend we're, we're seeing in the industry where, yeah, like people are willing to just become a founder, leave their jobs. Um, I think maybe with a little bit less job security and maybe more layoffs and things like that, people are, people are deciding, you know, now might be their, their chance to, uh, you know, take a leap and, and try to start something new. So there's going to be a lot of exciting innovation. Um, something I'd love to ask you about are, you know, what are some of the most promising AI technologies you've invested in and how did they catch your attention? So I, I could talk about some of the public stuff uh, that, that I invested in. So um, my first investment at Samsung Next was Dynamo FL. And um, these guys, they were working on federated learning at that time. And uh, coming from Apple, obviously privacy mattered a lot to me. And that's why like somehow it became my first investment or YC and like, you know, at Samsung Next. And um, at that time, like, we weren't sure. Like, it was just the beginning of 2022, like, January, February time, fra time frame. Nobody was really sure that, okay, like, you know, Google was trying to do some federated learning stuff. They launched their product for, like, you know, ads and stuff. But, uh, you know, it didn't take, to take off. And, like, you know, uh, I don't know if, like, people are really using the product. But then, like, I felt so strongly about just privacy and trustworthy AI at that time was like, no, this is the right thing for us to do. We need to like, you know, encourage more of these computation platforms, which have privacy embedded into it. Like not just, it's not just about like, you know, uh, training your ML model. It's also about like deploying them or like, you know, just collecting the data in some way and still like, you know, being able to do it in a trustworthy way. Right. So I feel like that was one of the breakthroughs um, that I, I feel very proud of at this point. And now those guys have come like a long, long uh, distance ahead. Uh, they, they're doing great. Yeah, very proud of them. Yeah, doing an amazing job. And, you know, to your credit, a, you know, great work spotting talent in a solid company. So, another company that you um, found and invested in, which also did very, very well, was Mosaic ML. And it was recently acquired by Databricks. I'm wondering... You know, what made that investment stand out to you? So here's the story about it. So I remember being at MIT and uh, taking some lectures at that time. And uh, Michael Carbin was like giving a lecture on lottery ticket hypothesis. And um, my brain just like it blew away like with all the details. It was like, oh, my God, these numbers are insane. This method is insane. And I discovered them uh, at MIT, actually. And I remember like, going to Julie Choi, like from um, the, the, like, you know, it was really crowded space. And I just landed straight away to Julie's like, you know, uh, podium. And I was like, hey, Julie, like, you know, I really, really want to invest in you guys. When can we meet? I want to learn more. And I was so, so excited about them. Um, I think what stood out for me, um, so I used to train my AI models all the time while you're like, I was at Apple and, and during my time at Stanford. Um, and I know how difficult of for task it is to have like, you know, these models being trained with lesser compute cost and in lesser time. It, it used to take us multiple days and weeks and months at time to train the models in a right way. And, um, you know, not to mention like there used to be some mishaps, like what if uh, you're in between training of your model and entire like, you know, uh, setup is down, like, you know, what if the rack that you build suddenly like something happens gets short-circuited one of the laptop 
like you know if one of the machine or gpus is down then what do you do with it like you know it will go ahead and it will restart the entire training process and i i dealt with those kind of problems like you know during my time as an engineer i was like no um there has to be a more efficient way to do these things and that's when like i met um you know was at ml and i remember like you know talking to jonathan frankel and he was he, he showed me uh, that how seamless uh, it was and i was like oh my god this is amazing like um, i i i think there is definitely a technology breakthrough here um and uh, you know we went ahead with the investment at that time like based on the intuition and um, the diligence that we did in the background and they were like you know some strong strong like you know synergies there with samsung next as well so we went ahead with the investment that's amazing yeah and obviously very successful company was acquired for billions by databricks um something i would love to ask you about you know what are some of the ethical considerations you take into account when you're investing into ai companies yeah i think definitely that has become more of a talk in like i'm i'm so glad like people are thinking more about this right like even when we are considering an investment we ask like different questions like where is your data set from what do you do with uh data that you collect like do you collect any data uh without you know uh, without acknowledging anybody um and like you know different things um we consider like how are you training your models um uh, Uh, how secure is your data like you know how secure your platform is in general right so we ask those questions now during our diligence time like every time so it's it's the part of the process and i feel like ethically it's very important to also know like if there are any legal obligations as well like you know to the idea that the person is working on or like if it is an open source repository can uh can they really build something on it like because we are seeing a lot of like you know different um, oss based uh, you know startups worlds um and it's, it's important to do those kind of legal diligences as well ahead of time right so uh in general like it's it's very important to make those choices very smartly and diligently even for startup founders that um that is my advice in general that no matter how you building make sure that the foundation that you building is on a solid solid ethical moral ground so that nobody can come to you like you know tomorrow that and say hey that's my work you you don't want to get into trouble uh, you know unless until you are like a late stage startup um yeah. you want to continue like building and you know waiting and that should be the goal but you can only do that if if you consider the eth- ethical like implications of taking certain steps so it's it's very important to take care of those yeah i i love that i think that's so important and i'm really happy that you know that's something that you are looking at when you're making these investments um you know hina it's been incredible having you on the show today i uh, hearing your insights as we wrap this up i'd love to ask you one last question which is based on all your experience everything that you've seen in the in the space Where do you see the field of AI heading in the next let's say 3 to 5 years? What are some of the big advancements that you're excited about um that you think will be coming down the pipe? I think one of the biggest advancement uh, that I want to see is cracking down physics in AI in so way. Can AI like you know predict uh the physics of the real world in some way? Can it predict like where it's going to like if um i'm throwing like it's it this is an easier problem right like if you want to throw something like can you guess the trajectory is yes, that is possible but then there are more complicated like you know quantum level uh molecular level like you know uh, physics uh unknowns there right that ai can help us solve and then the other thing that i'm very excited about is the common sense understanding right like how can we make uh, the everyday consumer robots more smarter like i would love to come home some day and have like a very nice freshly cooked meal like at my home in some way but we are really far ahead from that point but i'm starting to see some early like you know uh, promising ai startups in in that space as well where like you know there's no common sense like you know in the, in these machines using these llms which are multimodal now they they have better understanding of like how to like you know 
connect these semantic concept pairs together or uh, you know these sensory like you know uh, pairs together in order to have like better evaluation of the real world in in some way in, and function in much more like performant and optimized way in unstructured environments too so really look forward to the next phase of robotics which is going to be the next phase of ai actually so very very excited with that of course like we need more 3d data sets in order to train these robotics uh, we need more and more like you know understanding of the three dimensional world uh, for our llms and that could only happen enormous 3d <laughs> data sets the giant giant data set that would be needed to train such kind of llm and of course like this some aspect of compute that needs to be solved before we could crack that problem yeah it's such a fascinating area to look at um love the predictions love what you're excited for hina if people are interested in getting in contact with you or following you on social media where's the best place for them to find you um i can, i'm active everywhere like if somebody messages me on linkedin and uh, twitter or just email me i'm i'll definitely like respond I may not respond if I'm out of office, like, or I'm traveling for a week or something, like, for personal reasons. But uh, if other than that, like, I I would definitely follow up and respond, even if like you know a startup is not meaningful, I'll still respond and I'll point you to the right person from the team to you know go to and talk to. So I I make sure the dots are connected in every possible way. Wonderful. Well, Hina, I will also um, leave in the show notes for the listener. Uh, a link to Microsoft's M12 um, program. Um, it has been fantastic having you on the show today. To the listener, thank you so much for tuning in to the AI Chat Podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you get your podcasts, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.